So let's do some Ninja Trader 8 Ninja Script programming today. And I wanted to gear this video more towards those of you that are just getting started out in Ninja Script. So it doesn't matter whether you have previous programming experience or not. C Sharp is not incredibly complicated, but what we're focused on here are the methods that are specific to a Ninja Script. And once you understand how these methods work and what the important parts of a Ninja Script are, you should be able to go out there, look at any Ninja script and kind of get a general idea of what it's doing and then modify it to suit your purposes. So there's six methods that I want to talk about, but the first one is not actually a method. And what I want to talk about is the properties section. This is one of the first places that I will go is down to the bottom of the file here. And it's usually within its own little region. You can see this little hash region properties so that I can expand it. And here we have all of the properties of the script and properties are things that the user can define when they add the script to the chart. So this script, for instance, is a script that I created to show me spreads. So for instance, the knob spread, the difference between the 10 year treasury and the 30 year treasury. These are all of the properties that I can define when I add that to a chart. So if I go and I pull up a 10 year chart and I add the indicator to the chart and come down here and it's going to be under spread, we can see all of the properties that are defined here at the bottom. For instance, the back leg and the back ratio. These are all here showing up in the indicator window when we're adding it onto the chart. Um, so I'm just going to show you really quick here. If I do ZN and ZB and click OK here, then we get the spread between the 10 and the 30 year treasury. All right. Now, another thing I should point out is that sometimes you will also see private variables defined up at the top of the file. So for instance, on this footprint chart that I was working on before Ninja Trader added their own footprints, I had a couple of variables. And I'm not going to go into the difference between private variables and class level variables and all of that, but just know that sometimes a variable might be defined at the top of a file and you might want to go looking there to see, you know, where it comes from. So let's talk about the actual methods. And the first method that I want to talk about is on state change and on state change, it gets triggered basically whenever the chart changes its state. So for instance, when you open up the indicator window to add an indicator onto the chart and you click add, it creates an instance of your indicator and it calls a certain state. And then when you click OK and it actually adds it onto the chart, that's a different state. And then when it's loading all of the data into the chart, that's a different state. Now, you don't have to memorize all of the different states and where they all matter and things like that because there is a very, very great documentation out there. So here's the on state change method in the Ninja Trader help guide. And if we come down here, we can kind of see here are all of the different states, right? Set defaults, configure active, data loaded, historical transition, real time terminated. But the basic gist of it is that this is where a lot of setup and tear down actions happen. So for instance, if we go back to my spread indicator here, we have this section that is a part of pretty much every Ninja script out there, the set defaults section. And this is where I set the default properties for all of those properties that I had down at the bottom of the file. So here, for instance, I'm setting by default, my front ratio was three and my back ratio was one because that was what the knob spread is. Although it changes, it's probably not that anymore. This is also where a lot of properties about the chart itself are set. So for instance, if you wanted a indicator that instead of creating a new section down at the bottom of the chart, it's drawing on top of the chart, then that's where you would set is overlay to true. Okay. Um, there could also be like configure for instance here. I do a little bit of setup here to pull out the correct instrument and add a data series in the back um, for our spread indicator, right? The next method that I want to talk about is on bar update. Pretty straightforward. Every time that the bar updates, this method is called. And when it gets called is determined by this property back up here in my defaults, the calculate property, calculate on each tick. So this one, it will actually calculate it every time that there is a change in the data 
the on bar update will get called. But you can also say on bar close, for instance. There are different ways so that you can save yourself processing power and things like that. Now, this method is where the business logic usually lies. The real calculations usually happen in this method. So, for instance, a really simple one in this particular indicator, I'm just doing, you know, a simple little formula here. A couple of things that I want to highlight is that the value or values array is going to be where you're actually going to be outputting data that gets drawn to. So here we're just calculating the, the, the close value of this spread. And so we're storing it into value of zero value being the actual data series that we have here and zero being the, the most recent data point. And again, they have really great documentation. So here's the documentation for on bar update. Uh, pretty much tells you everything that you might need to do. And the Ninja Script Code Wizard automatically generates this method for you every time. You almost always need this method. So the next two methods that I want to talk about are on market data and on market depth. And these methods are called every time that you receive new data from your data provider. So for instance, if a new market orders hit the market, new volume is coming in, that on market data method will get triggered. And when the level two changes, the on market depth method will get triggered. So I have a, a simple example here. For instance, every time that there is a change in the market depth, I'm just going to increase a little counter here. Actually quite useful. You should, uh, Try programming it up yourself and adding it to a chart. You might see something interesting on there. Okay. But pretty simple. I want to highlight. So for these two methods, the key thing to understand with these two methods is the market depth event args property that gets passed into this method. You see this right here. And this is the data that you are actually receiving from the broker. So if I come in here into this property, I can go market depth update dot. And when I do that, the IntelliSense will come up and that will tell me all of the properties of that event args. So I can see here, it's giving me information about the market depth. It's telling me um, what, how much the volume is changing, what time it happened at the price of, um, position, which is how far away it is. There's all of these different properties about it. And you can go and read about these in the documentation for more information. But that's a really quick and easy way to look at what information is available to you, what you can do. So these methods are a little bit more advanced because they're basically used to make order flow indicators. I wouldn't necessarily expect to understand everything that's going on in those methods because they tend to use advanced data structures. That is a discussion for a different day, but it is definitely a tutorial that I plan on making. So make sure you subscribe so that you know when that video is up. The last method that I want to talk about is on render. And this is basically what you use if you want to override the drawing logic of NinjaTrader. Now, this method isn't quite as common now because NinjaTrader has a lot of really great out of the box indicators for things like volume profiles and footprint charts that you would typically need to use this method for. However, there's still a lot of indicators out there and I still think that you should know and be aware of it because once you have mastered on render, you can literally do anything that you want. And the only thing that I really want to highlight here is again, there are input properties the chart control and the chart scale. And these are two properties that you're going to need to do your drawing with. Another thing that I would pay attention to is here in my on render, this was a footprint chart that I created a long time ago before Ninja Trader created their own footprint chart. Notice how I have things split out. So I I'm calling some methods that I have further down here, for instance, draw point of control. And then I pass that chart control and that chart scale down. I would highly recommend doing this because this can really help you simplify your code. If you don't split things out into methods, small blocks of code, maybe a hundred lines at maximum. 
If you don't do that, then all of a sudden you're going to end up with this huge, huge method that goes on for like thousands of lines and it's really, really difficult to manage. You don't want to do that. So always, always, always split things out if you can. So yeah, that's all there really is to it. I know that Ninja Script can be intimidating at first, but it's actually a lot more simple than it may seem. And you'd be surprised how far you can get just from looking at the code that comes with Ninja Trader 8 and just kind of modifying and tweaking things to your own satisfaction. So don't be afraid to get in there and get your hands dirty. This is going to be something that's only going to become more and more important in the market. I think that every trader should try to learn to program even just a little bit. It can make a big difference. And of course, I'm always here to help you out. We have a programming channel in the Discord, so you can go and ask channels there, or you can come and join us when we stream live every day from 8.20 to 10.30 Eastern time. Um, I'd also I'd love to collaborate. So I would love to know what are some indicators that you would like to see. Perhaps we can make them together and I can show you with a video how we set that up. So if there's an indicator that you would like to see, let me know in the video description below. So I hope to see you when I stream in the morning and in the meantime, stay profitable friends.